to this week's video insight. If you've been assiduously following the blog and our videos, you'll know we've presented frequently on the anticipated shortage of lithium, the decarbonisation investment theme, and the small cap beneficiaries of the electric vehicle revolution. We've previously reported the tipping point has already passed. In fact, that tipping point was Volkswagen Group's 2021 Power Day, where you might remember the company outlined a massive 25 billion euro capital expenditure plan to drive down uh, EV battery production costs and accelerate the transition away from internal combustion engines. In fact, what it did was trigger an OEM race to provide a full range of EV models. And there's a bit of a network effect going on here. More models produces more choice and therefore more desire, while more desire produces more models. UBS this week published the results of a survey of more than 11,000 consumers in the largest passenger vehicle markets in the world. And the survey revealed something quite surprising. 49% of consumers globally are very likely to purchase a fully electric or battery electric vehicle. And importantly, none of the countries surveyed experienced rising consumer subsidies, uh, suggesting that the increased popularity of EVs is in fact organic. It's not being tax or incentive driven. So consumer demand for EVs will be strong. And that means upstream supplies, those supplies of raw materials and so on, are going to struggle to keep up. And that should send raw material prices soaring if they haven't already, and certainly keep them elevated. Of all the investment banks, UBS is probably the most optimistic about EV sales penetration, um, with a forecast 22% of all passenger vehicle sales globally um, being EV in just three years time, and 54% by 2030. If they're right, battery supply is going to need to increase threefold by 2025, and would you believe it, 12-fold by 2030. But as we're discovering right now, sales targets are simply deferred when core ingredients become scarce or otherwise unavailable. Right now, it doesn't matter how badly you want that new Land Rover Defender or Toyota Land Cruiser, it doesn't even matter how much you're willing to pay. They're simply unattainable. Indeed, the global auto industry's devastating dearth of computer chips, critically important electrical wiring, palladium for catalytic converters, pig iron for steel, nickel for EV batteries and other essential parts, have practically immobilised deliveries and resulted in soaring prices for new and used vehicles. Meanwhile, BMW's hold of production at two German factories, Mercedes is slowing work at, at its assembly plants and Volkswagen's warning of production stoppages while it establishes alternative sources for parts. Nevertheless, when we reach the point that battery production cannot keep up with demand, it will serve only to extend the period by years of elevated prices for the raw inputs. And if there's one thing that's clear from the UBS survey, it's this, the tipping point for mass adoption of EVs has already passed and an unstoppable secular trend is now underway. UBS also noted the trend is actually rapidly accelerating as evidenced by the doubling of investment by most major global OEMs, something I referred to earlier. Companies we've previously explained are exposed to this theme include Pilbara Minerals. Their share price is now up 229% over the year. Remember, we've been talking about these companies for more than a year, maybe two years. Mineral Resources up 42% over a year. IGO Limited up 132%. Alcane, which is the old Oracobra, up 74%. And Eris is up 45% over the year. Now, among my peers and colleagues, there is a percolating view that based on those big share price moves I've just mentioned, some of the very good news of this EV theme might be partly factored or fully factored in to the prices already. Now, that's always difficult to quantify. On the one hand, it's quite possible they continue to soar from here, but it's also possible great returns can be made awaiting any pullback associated with dis uh, temporary disenchantment with the story. Now markets tend to grow weary or impatient and they do have a habit of jumping at shadows. So that might deliver investors a more palatable entry point. But one thing is certain, this train has left the station, the trend is underway, it's secular for many, many years uh, and it's going to have a major impact on many parts of the supply chain, um, both up and downstream. That's all from me today. Look forward to being in touch with you again in a week or two. Uh, and in the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and Twitter.